we have the tigers here at the sanctuary. The next thing we have to worry about, obviously, is, is getting them healthy, taking care of them health-wise. And it's great for us to have these new rescues here at the sanctuary. But it also, you know, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. Exactly how healthy they are, what it's going to take for us to take care of them, how much special care they may need or how healthy they're going to be. Both of the females seem very healthy, but we do have a, a male and female pair that live together, and that's TJ and Bella. So, of course, the first thing we need to do is get Bella spayed, uh, to, of course, to make sure that we don't have any unwanted births here. And also because we don't have a lot of animals at the sanctuary that are paired up, and we do have when we have two that get along and that can live happily together, we want to make sure they do get to stay together. And of course, uh, having cubs, especially having cubs when we don't know if these animals may be related, we don't know exactly how old they are, what their exact health status is, is just not something that's going to happen. So to prevent any of that, um, we are going to spay Bella and that's going to happen tonight. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, it's not just like dropping your dog or cat off at the vet to spay one of these animals. So right now we have our quarantine cage ready. We're working very hard to get our hospital completely disinfected. And though we're working in field conditions, it's pretty, um, it's pretty much primitive as far as how we're gonna do it. We will be doing it inside of our little hospital, which is a converted shed, but we still want everything to be sterile. We wanna do it as professionally as possible. We also need to make sure that everything that we transport the animals in is very clean, that all the surface areas they may touch are very clean, even our scale so we can weigh her to see how much she, uh, how much to sedate her and how, what, what we need to do as far as anesthesia goes. We want to make sure all that's clean. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. We will have two vets working on the procedures and that's Dr. Liz Wynn and Dr. Stacy Wadsworth and they will be tag teaming to make sure everything goes smooth. We'll also have a technician to run the anesthesia machine and then we'll have the staff here at Big Cat Rescue will be assisting in any way possible. Mostly we'll be doing the grunt work, uh, picking up the tiger and doing the heavy stuff. The real no-brainer stuff, that's what we're best trained for. And for the average person, you know, people want to know why we would spay this animal, why we would prevent it from having cubs. And, you know, the cubs that would come from an animal like Bella, that we don't know her genetic background, they're not animals that would help those in the wild. They're not genetically correct species. We don't know if they're Sumatran tigers, Bengal tigers, part Siberian tigers. We don't know. So genetically, they are not viable animals to ever be released back in the wild. And in all honesty, there's really not a program to put tigers back in the wild. It doesn't make any sense. There's hardly any wild left for the few tigers that are left out there. So as much as people want to say, oh, we're breeding them to save the tiger for future generations, we need to preserve their habitat. We need to save the ones left in the wild first. These are just her little incisors that are worn down and the chips in her canine teeth. And then these are all fractured from chewing on things. What about marking on this? You know, when we tell people that there, there are more than enough tigers in cages, we need to save the ones that are left in the wild. People have a hard time understanding that. But if they only knew with a matter of a few phone calls, we could have dozens of tigers, dozens of lions that don't have homes that were used when they were younger and are really of no use. Even the zoos, most zoos have a surplus of the big cat, especially lions and tigers. Well, it's now a week later since Bella has had her surgery. She's outside in the recovery cage. We have to keep her up off of the dirt and off of the ground where she could get bacteria in her surgical incision, but she is doing great. Uh, the surgery went wonderful. Her recovery is exactly on track, and in another week we'll get her stitches out. She'll get back outside and she'll be reunited with TJ, and really, everything went well. A lot of times Big Cat Rescue is criticized for spaying and neutering our animals here, especially the ones that are extinct in the wild. <laughs> <laughs>